Hi there, it's Kevin with the Rogue Market here with an update video to a topic that I have been very controversial on since the start of the Rogue Market channel and gonna give an update of how I feel about that product. So I guess this is sort of like a Rogue Audit style video. And today we're gonna talk about the Challenger decks and also the uh, just Pioneer format in a nutshell that has just been going through the roof as far as prices are concerned and why I think you should sell into the hype, uh, not wait and invest even more into these cards. I think that the bulk of these are going to be at their highs and we're going to see some leveling off because the supply of this, this uh, era is so high. So having modern comparative prices to return to Ravnica forward supply, I don't think can stick. Now, Pioneer might become the most popular format of all times, and that's the one thing that could make these prices stick, but I don't see that happening. It took a while for Modern to hit its peak popularity, and I think it's gonna take a while before Pioneer actually starts to hit its peak popularity, so these prices are just uh, a little bit, well, not a little bit, they're just way, way, way overblown. There's no reason that some of these cards should be worth more right now than they were during their standard height. So standard, of course, is going to be usually the time when cards see the most play, uh, but they also have the most supply, and so those sort of level out. But I'm not, I'm not buying into the fact that these RTR cards are have just become uh, less, uh, uh, there, there's been less of these. I don't know. Like there will be naturally the, the destruction of cards. People lose them. They get lost in, in collections where people quit magic and they don't enter the supply, but not really return to Ravnica forward. That's like cards that we consider from the time spiral block or the shadow more, uh, block those type of, of cards become more scarce a because they're old and B because that was a time period where it wasn't print to demand. There was a set time for a print run and once those uh, went out of their four to six months of their standard season they went to out of print. Return to Ravnica was a completely different time period where they they pre printed to demand and as long as it was in standard they were going to do more waves to support those sets. So sets like Return to Ravnica, Theros, uh, Kaladesh and um, Constar here, Battle for Zendikar, those first sets out of the standard seasons have a ton of supply when you compare it to the rest of the cards in Magic's history. So I think right now is a good time to be selling out in the price spike. If you did invest in the RTR forward, I've been talking about this a long time. I wrote uh, deck builder channels, well as Rogue Market channel, that I thought there would be a format that bridged the gap. Well, here we are. If you did take that advice and invest in those cards, I think now is a good cash in time because comparatively speaking, you can't compare like a Nike Those Shrine and Nyx or a Mana Confluence to something out of, I mean, those, those are getting to like gemstone uh, levels or gemstone cavern levels uh, from modern. I mean, Journey to Nyx does not have low supply. Neither does the uh, Theros from Nike Those Shrine and Nyx. Both of these do have like a commander uh, supply that's, that's, that's reaching into it, but yeah, doubling up. Yeah, no, I don't think so. I don't think that these are going to stick. I think everything's going to come back down to earth. So back to my main point for this video, this is the challenger decks. So I've been very critical of the challenger decks because I thought they were a product that were just awful because wizards would not touch their equity for the sets that survived rotation. So if you look at the 2018 challenger decks, they chose everything from Amonkhet and Kaladesh blocks. And then these challenger decks rot on shelves because once these cards rotated, these came out in April, uh, rotations in September, they only had a short time that they were actually viable to play in standard. There were actually very few FNMs left. There are very few Grand Prix left. You could even play these decks and be successful with them. Um, and they packed full of the equity from the rotating sets. And that was just, just in my opinion, the stupidest thing, a greedy thing by Wizards of the Coast to not touch their equity for the sets that were like in this particular one, it was the Ixalan and Dominaria uh, that they didn't touch anything from. And then the Challenger decks 2019, they didn't touch anything from uh, like the Ravnica uh, forward sets. So how do I feel about these now with Pioneer? Well, this product went from absolutely garbage to it went from trash to treasure. So, but there's very little time to move on these. If you still can find these at your local game store or lo local Walmarts, I think you should pick them up even at their MSRP price because they are packed full of value. Um, if you do so, then you probably do want to sell the cards that are in them because again, I don't think these prices can hold because of the supply is so high. So these sort of challenger decks, I do now like going forward because they do, they, they, I would even consider these more pioneer. So play this for a couple months in standard and then turn them into pioneer decks. And hopefully they start to look at that as uh, the 
way they build these decks. I still think that Wizards could have been uh, less greedy, put some more cards that have lasting value in even uh, now Pioneer, like land bases and such like that, but also put more lasting value so people would actually purchase these uh, post-rotation for the next standard season. But as is, they still are a great uh, product to invest in long-term now uh, when these do get dumped on the market for like Challenger Deck 2020. Of course, we'll have to wait till March to see those lists, to see what's in those particular decks. We can start to get an idea of what's in the Challenger decks for 2020 because they are typically um, started to, like this is the time period where they start to collect the deck list of what did well at the, the, like the MCQs and the, the Grand Prix and whatnot. It's usually the Pro Tour that they look at and they 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 scrounge together the deck list and then uh, come up with a, a hundred dollar budget to build you know four different decks out of so we'll be looking at uh, possible for challenger 2020s um, but uh, for this particular topic we're just going to focus on the challenger decks of 2018 and 2019 and you can see these are all good buys right now you get uh, for this particular one like chandra if you can get in at the the uh, cost so these used to, to be sold for about a 140s uh for eight decks and so that that takes the price down to each deck about you know less than 20 bucks a a, a deck and Chandra Torch of Divines, you can make your money right back there with the Hazret and the Chandra. Uh, if you go down into the Vehicle Rush, you make your money back with uh, some of the lands, like the Concealed Courtyards and the Unclaimed Territories and the Spire, Spire of Industries, as well as the Inspiring Vantage. Uh, you get your money back there because some of these are in multiples. And if we even go down to the Second Sun Controls, like the the one that's that's rough, except you get the Field of Ruin. And who knows if like this Irrigated Farmland is going to start going up in value uh, or the Approach to Second Suns. This t seems to be a pretty good deck right now in the pioneer format with uh, dig through time approach to second sun dot deck as well as like settle the wreckage seems to be a, a pillar of this particular format uh, of the pioneer format uh counter surge is the one that really really benefited from the pioneer format with walking ballista going up in value as well as fatal push finding another home uh and blossoming uh blossoming defense and blossoming uh did they put the blossoming i guess they didn't in the the, the land base, uh, Boston Defense, find another home, uh, and Aether Hub even go up, up in value. So this one actually does seem pretty good uh, for the Pioneer format. If we head over to the Challenger tw Deck 2018, let me talk about Challenger Deck this though. This one was immediately bought out. Um, most of my distributors did have 2018s left. And when the Pioneer format was announced, uh, these were immediately bought out. So unfortunately, I cannot get these anymore for that 140s uh, of the 2018, but I still can get the Challenger Decks 2019 for that price. And so this is the one you're going to have to make the, the decision if cards like History of Benalia, let's, let's check over to paper, if cards like History of Benalia will actually see play in this Pioneer format. Uh, or uh, cards like Legion's Landing or Benelish Marshall, uh, these, if these end up being like a uh, White Weenie ends up being a deck that is viable in Pioneer, possibly these are, are investable products. Uh, coming over here to the Challenger decks with the, I mean, I should be zooming in here. Sorry about that. Uh, Challenger decks for the um, Mono Red, Experimental Frenzy, Wizard Lightning, Lightning Strike. Possibly all these might be pillars of the format. Uh, we do have other cards like Goblin Chain World that I'm expecting to see play in the format as well as Run with Steam Kim and get you Lava Runner. Rekindling Phoenix 2 has had like a little bit of a, a bump in price since the Pioneer format. This might be a viable option to invest in the Challenger Decks 28 or 2019. Uh, same thing coming over to the uh, Golgari. Uh, some of these cards too, like Cast Down gets Br a Breath of New Life. This particular one could see play. We have cards like the Ravenous Chupacabra and then we do have the mana base on this with the Woodland Cemetery and the Overgrown Tomb that now have some uh, more eternal play than they used to. So this one actually does seem like a decent one. Uh, last but not least is the Phoenix gets a new breath in the form of this Pioneer format. It's actually uh, jumped up a couple bucks as well as I'm expecting there will be some Nivmas at Perun decks. I think this is actually a powerful card. Uh, with a lot of the uh, decks that are moving over to the more of the mid-range and control. This is just one that can take over the game. Uh, some of these other decks also look like they have the ability to see a lot of play in this format, like Lava Coils and Chart of Course. Uh, unfortunately, this does have just the Sulphur Falls, uh, but Sulphur Falls, again, gets bre uh, a breath of new life in uh, this format, and I think these lands are going to be the go-to lands. I think it's going to be Shock and Check are going to be the the, the the land base that most people are going to run. I think the mid-range decks will want Shock Check. I think the aggro decks will want uh, Shock and Fast Lands. 
So uh, these ones are interesting. Again, I can still get these around that price point. They, they aren't worth it to break apart right now. Uh, however, long term, they might be for the Pioneer format. And this is probably the time you need to get in on them uh, to actually be able to dump these or, or break these down and actually sit on these for being able to dump later on. So if you are a patron, I can still get these around. It is around like 140 to 150, I think, is the price point for the 2019 Challenger decks. Alrighty, so that's kind of my Challenger decks. Again, it's it's something that I still think I was right. If these continue just to be a standard product, if we didn't have a Pioneer format, these are awful products. But now sitting as where we do have a Pioneer format, I think these are pretty good and it, and it gives them um, some long-term value. And I think that the 2020s and everything will be great products to buy into and play in standard and, and then rotate into uh, Pioneer going forward. However, as Pioneer approaches how modern worked, where more cards are, are printed and therefore it makes the power level of the format increase, these are going to have less relevance as time goes on. Alrighty, so the other thing I want to talk about here is just sealed product. So sealed product is something I think you should move on right now in the Pioneer format if you want sealed product. All of these had had an increase, like Theros went up. All of these have had, I'd say, about a 5 to 10% increase increase on Amazon and eBay uh, for all of the, the sets that have rotated from Return to Ravnica forward. Some of the boxes that I can still get is, like, Return to Ravnica, every now and again, I can get it at a decent price, around 70 to 80 bucks. Gate Crash, same thing. Dragon's Maze, you can still get it at a very, very low price, but you can see that it's not worth much. But all of these are having this little increase. Uh, since the Pioneer format was spoiled, we have Kansa Tarkir going even up, even though the fetch lands were the main value from it. Fate Reforged also getting a bump up, and Dragon's Tarkir getting a massive bump up since the Pioneer format. Shadows of Indistrad having a huge bump. Cards like Tireless Tracker, Thing in the Ice, are leading the helm. Eldritch Moon, same thing with cards like Liliana and Grim, uh, Grim Flayer. And even Kaladesh, Kaladesh getting a bump back up. This used to be the bad, it, it got a $20 bump up from the Pioneer format because this tends to be one of the more powerful sets in the uh, uh, Pioneer meta at the moment with a lot of cards seeing play, uh, even A3 Volt 2, seeing that big bump up in, in price value. So I'm expecting box prices to follow suit. Uh, Kaladesh, A3 Volt, are, our boxes are hard to get. Battle for Zendikar, Oath of Gatewatch. Uh, well, Oath is still easy to get. I'm pretty sure I can still get Oath of Gatewatch between 90 and 95. Uh, Shadows of Innistrad is still something you can get around 85. Eldritch Moon, um, Oath the Gate or Battle for Zendikar, Kaladesh Block, those ones are very, very hard to get. Constructor here, of course, is very hard to get. Fate Reforged is something 100 to 125 range, uh, I can get occasionally. Dragon, same thing, I can get in the 90s range. And all the Return of Gravnica block, I can still get. Uh, Amiket block also seems to be pretty neat. It just did rotate not too long ago, though, but they did get bump ups in value since the Pioneer format. And these boxes can still get, you can still get between the 85 and 90 quite easily from distributors. Um, last but not least, the Ixalan blocks did have some significance from Rivals and Ixalan. These sets are actually selling quite fast. Uh, there's a lot of my distributors are out of them. I still do have a couple of distributors that have already bumped the price up between the 90s and the 100s. And Dominaria, for whatever reason, this is another one of those sets that is just impossible to find. I think this one's just ridiculous with people that invested in the sealed product of Dominaria with it having such low EV. Uh, this one you can't get for under 125. It's very, very tough to find. Still can get all the card, the, all the, the uh, sets in standard. Some of these actually look like they're decent long term now with the Pioneer format with War of the Spark, of course, with Teferi Narset. With Ravnica Allegiance, with um, you know Hydra Crisis that still sees some play, and Guilds of Ravnica actually has a lot of things like Assassin's Trophy that survive into this Pioneer format, actually thrive in this Pioneer format. So just keep it, keep your eye on sealed products with Pioneer going forward. Had uh, a lot of them, even like Core 2019, have cards from the the C play Magic Origins. There's another set that's not too hard to find. Uh, for a reasonable price and even if you can find deals on like the 2014 and 2015 2014 especially has a lot of cards mute of all scavenging ooze that are going to be pillars in this format so that's just a little bit update about the pioneer format for the sealed box prices yes i do think challenger decks are good now and i'm going to update that and retract my statement that these are garbage products i actually think they're very good right now and again if you can find these in bargain bins at your local game stores or closeouts at your targets and walmarts or if you can just find any of these little things uh occasionally they'll throw these things in these mystery boxes at walmart because what uh, shady people do is they open these products take out like a few of the cards or, or somehow these get damaged and what mj holdings does is then they take all the damaged products and just uh anything that's still sealed uh they throw in these little cubes these these, these uh plastic cubes and sell them as mystery 
uh, or or chaos or something like that. They'll, they'll name I can't remember what they name them, but you can find full decks if you just kind of look around in those um, uh, cubes to see if there's any of these full decks in those things. Those are actually pretty decent right now if you can get in at a low price. But usually MG Holdings even spikes those up to a, a value that is is unreasonable uh, for these decks. So again, that's my little update about Challenger decks. Yes, I've changed my tone about them. Um, yes, Pioneer is has just taken off like crazy. Just look at these cards that have gone up. I don't think these can hold there's just too much supply especially like when you compare collected company which is a modern card uh to some of these cards that have been recently printed like like and only see play in this pioneer those are the particular ones that, that i'm moving out of so uh ones ones like the the mana confluence this card is overblown yes it does have the commander i'm very surprised this card hasn't seen a reprint just because of commander like i haven't been investing in this just because i've been expecting this card every year in commander uh, products and it hasn't had a reprint uh, this is also one that i think is pretty easy to print in standard so uh it's just very very uh this is this is the card that is 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 what i call a toxic asset here in magic the gathering it's something that the 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 the, the, the potential of this getting reprint is so high compared to not getting reprint so those are the type of ones i don't like um and yeah, smugglers copters sell into the spike, and especially the ones that could get banned. So I did my ban video. I'm still doubling down on those car uh, um, ones. I think Dig Through Time will actually be the first card banned now. I think it's actually the most degenerate. I've been playing a versus a lot of other decks. It is just too easy to get enough cards in your graveyard to cast Dig Through Time for two blue, and I think it'll be the first one gone. But anyway, that's the subject for another day. Just thought I'd get a video out here about the Challenger decks, about sealed product. You need to make a move right now if you want sealed. Sealed is going fast. Uh, anything return around to go forward fast 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 pm me if you're a uh, patron and i can quote you prices on what i can get from various distributors it's kind of awkward because one distributor will have one set another distributor will have another set it's it's hard to get from one place uh of these these products so anyway hope you enjoyed this video this has been kevin with the rogue market thanks for watching